This is Lesson 217N, The Code of Hammurabi. And we're going to start with the background of Hammurabi. Well, Hammurabi was a man of war. He was a leader of a group of people called the Amorites, or Old Babylonians. And he created a new empire in the area that was Mesopotamia by employing a well-disciplined army. Soldiers carried bronze, axes, spears, and daggers, and he employed a divide-and-conquer method to gain control of Sumer and Akkad. He built a new capital city named Babylon. And he assimilated Mesopotamian culture with Sumerian ways to create a larger, more stable culture. He was extremely interested in state building, in other words, building a strong centralized government, funding the building of irrigation systems and temples and walled cities and public buildings, and he encouraged and protected both domestic and foreign trade. So let's talk about the code of Hammurabi. Its origins. It was not the first code of laws in Mesopotamia, but most of the earlier laws survive only in fragments. And the code of Hammurabi provides insight into just about every aspect of Mesopotamian society and life. There were 282 law co codes carved into steles, and steles are stone monu monuments with text on them. And you see a picture of this stele right here in a museum with Hammurabi on the top in a carving dispensing his law code. And you're going to see that stele in an artist's rendering. Criminal codes. Hammurabi's code was a very strict system of justice. His penalties were severe and they varied according to social class. Examples, a crime against a member of the upper class, the nobility, by a member of the lower class, a commoner, was punished more severely than the same offense against a member of the lower class. Hammurabi's code included the principle of retaliation and retribution, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. However, this principle only applied to social equals. Members of the upper classes usually just paid fines as punishment for crimes against the lower members of society. Responsibilities of public officials, governors, and city officials were expected to catch criminals, and failure to do so meant that the officials had to replace property or pay damages to the victims or their families, and this was done out of their own pockets. Soldiers were expected to serve. If a soldier hired a substitute to serve in his place, then the original soldier was put to death and the substitute was given full control over the man's estate. Consumer protection laws. Builders were responsible for the buildings they constructed. If a building collapsed and killed a family member, a family member of the builder was also killed. Laws surrounding renting and owning farmland were also within the code. Consumer protection laws. Irrigation laws were strict because of the geography of Mesopotamia. Interest rates on loans were watched very closely, and if a lender raised his interest rates after a loan was made, that lender lost the entire amount of the loan. Wage restrictions were different for key laborers. Marriage and family law, this was the largest category of laws. And parents were to arrange marriages for their children and both parties were to sign a formal marriage contract. And it consisted of a bridal payment by the husband as well as a dowry paid by the bride's father. The role of women. Barefoot, pregnant, and in the kitchen was the order of the day. Women had very little in the way of legal rights when they married. Women had some business rights, but not many. And when the husband died, his property, at least in theory, was transferred directly to her, 
and the wife had the right to distribute the property as inheritance to her children as she wished. Divorce. The husband had the most power over divorce. The woman was expected to fulfill her duties at home and in bed, or else the husband could divorce her and keep the dowry. However, if the woman had done nothing wrong and could prove it, then she would have the dowry, her bridal payment, returned. Sexual relations. Men were allowed to have extramarital affairs. Women were not. Women who committed adultery were to be killed, but could receive a pardon from her husband. Incest was strictly forbidden. Uh, a father who, who was caught was sent into exile, and mother-son relations resulted in both being burned. Parents' rights. Parents had total rights over their children, and obedience was demanded. They could not disinherit their children arbitrarily. There had to be a reason, and it needed to be brought before a court of law. Okay, let's read some of these laws. For example, Code 229, The Carpenter. If a carpenter builds a house for a man and does not make its construction sound, and the house which he has built collapses and causes the death of the owner of the house, the builder shall be put to death. Our Code 110. If a sister of God, somebody we would probably call a nun today, who is not living in a convent, opens a wine shop or enters a wine shop for a drink, they shall burn that woman. Code 117. If a man be in debt and is unable to pay his creditors, he shall sell his wife, son, or daughter, or bind them over to service. For three years they shall work in the houses of their purchaser or master. In the fourth year they shall be given their freedom. Code 108. If bad characters gather in the house of a wine cellar, and she does not arrest those characters and bring them to the palace, that wine cellar shall be put to death. Code 143. If a woman has not been careful, but has gadded about, neglecting her house and belittling her husband, they shall throw that woman into the water. Code 185. If a man takes in his own home a young boy as a son and rears him, one may not bring claim for that adopted son. Code 195. If a son strikes his father, they shall cut off his hand. Code 2. If anyone bring an accusation against a man, and the accused go to the river and leap into the river, if he sink in the river, his accuser shall take possession of the house. But if the river prove that the accused is not guilty and he escape unhurt, then he who had brought the accusation shall be put to death, while he who leapt into the river shall take possession of the house that had belonged to his accuser. 